It's uh, 10.30 on, this, on the 5th of June, 2008. I've been working with Mobius strips. Uh, here's a Mobius strip. It's a loop of paper, but given one flip or 180 degree rotation of one end, it has one surface um, or one boundary, uh, one edge. Basically, if you draw a line down the middle, you end up uh, back where you started and you travel along both sides of the surface, which is an illusion. There's only one side to this surface. But I've been working with Mobius strips that have three flips, which is right here. And I've been cutting them down the middle. When your scissors go down the middle, the, the edge that is on both sides of the scissors becomes the same edge. And what I've been doing from there is I've been adding half snips. Um, well, actually, when you cut this down the middle, you get this figure right here. This is a loop. Um, the loop has eight twists. Uh, it becomes two surface. there's surfaces. There's a white surface and a black surface. And there's two edges. There's the black edge right here and the blank edge right here. It also has a, a trefoil knot on the middle. Um, I could explain how that comes, but it's not really important. Um, what I've been doing from these figures is that I've been adding half snips to the plane so they can intersect. Um, we, there's six lines needed to flatten. This, this shape, a line is nothing more than an intersection of two planes. So with some half snips, you'll see that we can flatten them. Here's a mobile strip that's been flattened. But I made this with, um, with blank paper, and you can see we lack information. We don't know if it goes this way or this way. We can't tell which edge, so we'll throw that away. And what I did, I made up some Mobius paper. Here you can see the Mobius paper. It's been drawn so we can see where the edges are, and we can see where the sides are. So here's my roll of Mobius paper. I've gone through 100 meters of this to make my Mobius strips. You can see all the Mobius strips that I've gone through. It's like a, a library of them. Um, this is just like a small portion of the ones that I've made. Um, and what I've been doing is that, like I said, we had six um, intersections and that flattens it. So we've been trying to make Mobius strips stand up like fencing. So here it is with six intersections and it all stands up. And you can see the edges. Here's the black edge on top and here's the blank edge when i tend to trace them i trace them with the black with the black edge down towards the paper you can see the black edge on the floor but this one i've actually made a mistake um i've traced it this way with the black edge up and you can see this is a mobile strip number 20 of the clockwise variety and i've said that it's upside down previously i always say that you know black is down that's how i trace them um there's Chiral versions, left-handed and right-handed versions, and I've been working with the counterclockwise Mobius strips cut down the middle, but I've been making sure that when I trace them, the black edge is always down. And you can see, I lay them down and I make a knot diagram, so I just trace out the boundaries. Here, here it is, my knot diagram. There's always six intersections, and I start with this point right here. This is uh, point number one. We always start at the inside loop on the over version. We go around the knot. Through the next loop, there's always two loops, if not three. Then we go into the overhand knot right here. I've developed knot notation on my own. Here's my knot notation, you know, over, under, over. You can see over, under, over. Uh, I, I invented this on my own, but knowing knot theory, but not knowing the ins and outs of it, I haven't converted back to Docker notation or common notation. I've used my own, and I've converted it to a binary code. And the blocks are the um, under rotations. I've, I've compiled all the knot notation into like a, a binary code and I go looking for similarities. So for example, here's number 28 on the tail end of it. It's four unders and then three overs. But if we look at number eight, it starts with um, four unders and two overs, two um, unders. And they're actually mirroring images of each other because um, they are. And we can see those right here. Here's number number 28. Here's its knot diagram. Here is number 28. You can see the, the black side is up, but it actually goes this way. So it sits this way. It has the mirror image of itself, number number 8. And they're actually mirror images of itself. So even when you're working with counterclockwise Mobius strips cut in the middle that had three flips, you get um, mirror images of each other, which is really interesting. And I found other mirror Im images between like four and two, for example, in my in my library. I haven't found all the images, but they, I know that they pair up. So all the knot no, diagram, all the knot diagrams, they all have six intersections. For example, here one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, there's only one solution I found that has eight intersections. Here's this BC right here. 
It's symmetrical as you can see. It's got eight intersections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, we'll throw this one away. That one's a bit of a scary one. And we can see the knot diagram of that one right here. If we go back to my notebook. That one, I don't understand why there's only one solution with, with, with eight, with a crossing number of eight. Here it is right here. It's perfectly symmetrical. It's interesting that it has eight intersections, but it has nine boundaries. A boundary is nothing more than a region defined. It actually then has a Betty number of, of nine. Um, so from the knot diagrams, I have been converting them into multigraphs. So we've got to go back to the original page, and here's a knot diagram that's been translated into um, a pseudograph. I realize that my lines are not straight right here, uh, but we know that this one here is planar because uh, we don't need to make any intersections to get the, the vertices to connect. If you don't know what planar is, planar and non-planar are very simple. Uh, if we could pass by all my knot diagrams, here's all the knot, here's all the pseudographs. I realize I haven't drawn them with straight lines, but they can be translated into a spear. So even though this line has to go around to connect, if it was on a spear, it could go around the back of the spear. And the Euler characteristic can still be applied. I found that all of the pseudographs have a Euler characteristic of zero. Uh, the Euler characteristic is really simple. It's the um, the vertices minus the edges plus the faces equals 2. So with a cube, for example, you have uh, to 16... How many edges do you have in a cube? you got 8 vertices, 12 edges, and 6 faces. So edges minus... Sorry, vertices minus edges plus faces is equal to... 8 minus 12 plus 6 equals 2. So that's how you apply the Euler formula to a cube. Um, going back to my pseudographs, the, most of them have a Euler characteristic of 0. Um, the uncut Moby strip of one flip has a Euler characteristic of 0. That's no coincidence. There's a reason for that. Uh, I've still worked out the Euler characteristics of the, of the graphs that are non-planar, only because I believe that you can wrap this uh, graph around a spear, and this line here that actually would have to intersect this point, well, this line could be around the back of the spear, so we can still, I guess, apply that principle. So planar is really simple, that with vertices uh, 1 and 3, the line connects them. It's planar. There's no lines that got to cross another edge. Um, this graph here is non-planar because clearly um, between vertices 4 and 3, this edge right here has to pass by the, the edge between vertices 1 and 2. That one's non-planar. So that's interesting. The other point is that um, all the knot diagrams have a cross number of 6. And last off, they all have a Betty number of 7. Now, if you don't know what a Betty number is, it's very simple. Um, you want to look at a network, and you want to look at all the faces, and you want to take away edges. Here it is here. This is the pseudograph. What is the Betty number? Well, we want to take away all the edges so that there's no enclosures left, but the vertices are still connected. So we take away this loop, this loop, this loop. We take away this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge. That's seven. What we're left with is the vertices connected. One to two to five to six to three to seven. One to two to five to six to three to seven. There were seven edges taken away. The Betty number is seven. And with all the pseudographs, all of them have a beta number of 7. There's no coincidence for that. They all share the same connectivity. Now, I don't want to work out all of the, the paper models because I've turned the paper models into pseudographs, and I want to know how many pseudographs there are. Well, that's a big problem, which I'm just trying to figure out, and it's really simple. Uh, there's a number of points that, that the pseudographs share. They all have at least two vertices that share a multi-edge. These two points here have two edges. They all have at least two, if not two loops. Here, two loops. Some have even three loops. For example, this one here has two loops, but this one here has three loops. Three loops. So all these pseudographs have between two to three vertices that have a degree of three. A degree of three means it's connected to three other vertices. They all have between two and three loops. There's always 12 edges, six vertices, and seven faces. Two loops are always connected to two separate vertices. Always, there's at least there's always at least one, if not two, vertices with multi-edges. 
and there's a maximum number of degree. There's four. No vertices can have a degree of more than four. That's it.